and welcome back friends to Cajun Coding this is St. Raz and we are continuing on our Java journey on the Coding Bat website created by Nick Pilarte and uh, we're on the string one section and we're going to be continuing on without with the uh, without n2 let me see uh, we have the we finished the the end exercise and we're going on to uh, without end two now you notice it's not without it is uh, without or with the, there's no T there interesting I should point that out what difference does that make well it might not make much difference in terms of me narrating the video um, doesn't make much difference in terms of people understanding what exercise I'm on or anything like that but little mistakes like that uh, little oversights a single letter missing that is something that can wreak havoc if that happens to be a variable name or a keyword that is misspelled or something like that so if you have weird errors or the uh, program isn't running uh, the way you expected it to especially if it runs but doesn't produce the, the wanted outcome you don't get an actual error from the compiler you might want to go check uh, all the variable names, uh, you know, keywords, things like that. Look for a very you know, tiny error like that. You have to be very meticulous sometimes when you're looking over things because a small change like that can make a big difference. But anyway, uh, continue on with the exercise. Given the string, return a version without both the first and last character of the string. The string may be any length, including zero. And I think we've done something very similar to this. However, they uh, did have the stipulation that the string would be at least, at least length two. So they're removing that now. So any length, including zero. So we're going to have a conditional here. So, so let's say if the length is... Uh, if we're removing the first and last character, then any string of zero, one, or two characters is going to return an empty string. So if str length is less than three or equal to or less than two, we return and we don't have to manipulate the string or even name a different string we can just return empty string there and here's the logic that we need for all other cases in which we return a substring now we're omitting the first character so we're going to be starting at index one which is the second character and we'll end it string length minus one and there we go and they provide a solution for this one as we get further into the exercises they have fewer exercises in which they provide a solution now uh, actually they did this almost exactly the same here and of course you can do it in reverse manner if string length is greater than or equal to two and then we would ret return this line of code and then return an empty string as the else middle two given a string of even length return a string made of the middle two characters so that the string string yields ri the string length will be at least two so obviously we'll be returning a substring now we're going to be returning just the two characters so what we're going to do is go ahead and take string length divide by two Oh, 
Okay, so let's say we have uh, four characters, as in this one. If we divide by two, that gives us two. Two is actually the third character, so what we're going to do here is going to be divide by two, then subtract one, and then just divide by two would be index two. Now that's up to but not including, so we'd actually want to do plus one, I believe. And there we go. Note order of operation, string length divided by two. Multiplication and division are performed first, so we don't have to use an additional enclosure there. We add or subtract one right after that. So ends ly given a string return true if it ends in ly that seems awfully easy actually uh, though we haven't used this method in a little while so return str substring and what is the substring if it ends in ly so it would be string length minus two and that will give us the last two characters of the string ends in ly and this is a string so we're going to use the equals method remember your double quotes and when will this not work we're looking at the last two characters so because the compiler is going to be examining those characters if those indices are invalid then we're going to throw that out of bounds exception so if str length is greater than or equal to 2 then that's what we're going to do and then otherwise that is if it's shorter than 2 we return false because it's impossible for it to end in ly. In twice, and I don't think they gave us, did they give us a solution on that one? <laughs> yeah, they didn't give us a solution on that one, so. In twice, given a string and an integer in return a string made of the first and last n characters from the string. The string length will be at least n. So we are returning a string, we're receiving an initial string and an integer n, and we're going to pull n number of characters from the beginning and from the end of the string. So we are going to be creating a new string and, and uh, manipulating that. Actually we don't have to. I think that's the easiest way so I'll go ahead and show you that way first. So string answer and we're going to go ahead and initialize that to an empty string. And the first n characters would be 0 to n is it going to be n or n plus 1? Now that second index up to but not including that index. However, our first character is going to be z at the 0 index. So because it's 0 index, n should work. And then we're going to go ahead and concatenate that. str substring. In the last n characters, so what we're going to do, take str, uh, c sub, oops, so we already did substring, str length minus n. And we actually, we can do that all in one line, so let's just do that. We don't need this. We could have just assign this to that string then return that string uh, by invoking the variable but that's kind of an additional step that's 
useless. Let me see. Do we have any really short? Oh, here is a really short one, but it's a zero. I don't think we have any. Actually, this one is. I was wondering about this case where the string is only four characters. You're returning the first four and then the last four. So you're returning actually a longer string than your original string. Apparently they're okay with that. So that was something I was wondering about. Two characters. Given a string and an index, return a string length two. Starting at the given index. If the index is too big or too small to define a string length two, we use the first two characters. The string length will be at least two. Okay, so what we're going to look at here is uh, we have, if we were to make a really simple solution here, it's possible the input would put us out of bounds. So if we otherwise would have gotten an out of bounds exception, we're going to return the first two characters. Not the uh, in this case, you might expect you know maybe the last two, but it says the first two. So index three, so that would be zero, one, two, three. So a would be index three. But since it since the next character would be out of bounds, you send the first two. So I uh, see. We'll go ahead and do if. Okay, so if index plus two is greater than your length, return substring uh, zero two. That'll be the first two characters. So if it overruns, we get the first two characters. Otherwise, we respond just as it instructs here, return string length to starting at given index. So it would be string sub string beginning at given index, so that would be index, and two characters, so index plus two. Hmm, what did I do here? I still went out of bounds. What happened? Uh, oh, we have a negative one. Hmm. What do we do with a negative one, huh? Well, that is an inappropriate index. So, what we're going to do is we can use our conditional or index less than zero and that does it uh, the edge case of index being negative was something I hadn't anticipated but sometimes we have to go back to the basics and use those conditionals and I think we should be able to well, we might not be able to finish the whole thing in, in 30 minutes but we should be able to get pretty far Maybe next video we'll finish up string one. Given a string of odd length, return the string three length three from its middle, so candy yields and the string length will be at least three. So uh, we shouldn't have uh, have to code an alternate solution. We're going to be able to grab everything uh, with just the one code block there. So might be able to do this in just one. Uh, line here. Yeah, so go ahead and return as to your, uh, and it's going to be a substring.
Okay, let me see. Let's take our example here, candy. So candy is 5. So if we take 5 using integer addition, uh, 5 divided by 2 is 2. And that puts us at 0, 1, 2. Uh, that's actually too far, so we're going to use minus 1. So that is 2. 5 divided by 2 is 2 and then minus one would be one so we'd be starting the string there at uh, index one which is right where it should be there for that so and then string length three so that would be you know three more so string dot length divided by two and three more than minus one would be plus two. And there we go. And then I'll have a, a published solution there has bad. Given a string, return true if bad appears starting at index 0 or 1 in the string, such as with bad xxx or x bad xx, but not xx bad xxx. The string may be any length including 0. And it does remind us use the dot equals method to compare two strings. Okay, it seems odd that they say compare two strings. Uh, I guess they're referring to the contents of the parentheses there. Uh, I guess they're counting that as a string, which I guess technically is correct. But uh, in any case, uh, let me see return. And we're going to do str sub string bad appears starting at index 1 so that would be 0 to 3 equals and remember the double quotes in there okay that should grab anything for in the instance of um, the first three characters now we can use our or str substring 0 actually it'd be 1 2 4 equals bad okay so we're getting somewhere however remember that the string may be any length including 0 so we have to worry about those edge cases Now, if the string is less than 3, we know it always comes back false. So if So is this always going to be correct here? Let me see. Now watch, there's going to be an error here. I think. Yep, there it is. It was possible they wouldn't have a, a test that would cause this error, but what happened here? So we have XBA. We have three characters. So it doesn't come back automatically as false, but when it checks it, what happened here? Well, this ran fine, because we were checking indices 0 to 3. This is what happened. We have three characters. There is no index 4. So that put us out of bounds. So we need to move this around a little bit. So What we can do is change some of this around a little bit. And what we're going to do is, let me go ahead and get rid of this. 
some of our naive solutions were kind of testing those edge cases in kind of a rigid way and we're going to be a little more flexible with it so instead we're going to do if string length is greater than 2 and actually I don't even know if we could just do return for this actually we can't I think we do have to do an F so if string length is greater than 2 and string substring 0 to 3 which will always be valid if string length is greater than 2 equals bad return true Okay. Now, what about indices 1 through 4? Else, if string length is greater than 3, it's got to be at least 4, and str sub string 1 to 4 equals bad. Return true. Now if neither of those are the case we return false. Okay. It, is there a more succinct way to do this? Well what we can do is over here with this if statement rather than end it there we can put the or take this and then here we end the if right here. Okay, that's the end of the if statement and return true. Oops, I think I have an extra bracket here. Return false. There we go. We can put that all in one if block. Now, if you do make something that long, you'll notice how long this line is. I recommend breaking it up a little bit to make it easier to read, especially since what you're looking at here, the second line is almost the same as the first. So you get to look at it and say, well, this should be 3 instead of 2. This should be 1 to 4 instead of 0 to 3. And their solution may have something like that. Let me see. Actually, they didn't combine them. They used them separately. But the logic is the same. Okay, and moving on. String 1 at first. Given a string, return a string length 2. Made of its first two characters of a string length is less than 2. Use the at symbol for the missing characters. Okay. All right, so... We're going to go ahead and make our string answer. Now we use an if statement here. If string length is greater than 0, if it's 1 or greater, then we're going to do append to our answer. Oops equals append to our answer and we can use character at for this one instead character at index 0 which will be the first character but 
but if it's zero length, then we're going to put the at symbol instead. Now, this is not an else. This is a separate if statement. And in this case, has to be greater than 1 in order to get that second character, in order there, for there to be a second character. However, the rest of the code very similar. Answer plus equals str character at index 1. And if it is not that long, we use the at. And don't forget to return our answer. And you'll notice short here, so we end up replacing the second non existent character with the at. Empty string, of course, at at. And they don't give an answer there. Last cars or cars, last cars given two strings, A and B, return a new string made of the first character of A and the last character of B. So yo in Java yields ya. If either string is length zero, use the at for its missing character. And this is one of the things I really like about coding bat because we're using very small changes in the use of these uh, these tools we have at our disposal, the methods and and uh, and such that we have been introduced to, but we're changing them in slight ways so we get to see their flexibility and doing things over and over again of course helps solidify that in our memory so first character of A last character of B replacing the said character with the at uh, if it is not available so we're going to go ahead and set up our answer string okay if a length is greater than zero meaning it has a first character We're going to add to answer that first character. I'm going to just use car at. Otherwise, we're going to add to answer the at symbol. And this is not part of that if else, and it's not nested inside that if else. This is a different if else. If B length is greater than zero, meaning it has a last character, we're going to add to answer that last character. And that would be Otherwise, we're going to add the at symbol, and don't forget to return the answer. Now, what do we do? Line four. Oh, it's not string. Str. See. This is the A. This is the A string. It is a string, but it's not their their standard str variable name. That would be A. Similar problem right here. This is B. Did I do that anywhere else? Yeah, I did. Where is it? There it is. It's, there we go. And it works fine. concat given two strings append them together known as concatenation and return the result however 
if the concatenation creates a double car, then omit one of the cars. So ABC and cat yields AB cat. So, so we're looking at the uh, comparing the first and last characters. So if a car at and the last character of A, so it'd be A length minus one. And actually if we do a car at, we're going to use the arithmetic comparator. And if that equals B car at, and it would be the first character, so it would always be index zero. So if that is the case, what we're going to do is return a plus b substring one, because we're going to be starting at one. Otherwise, if that's not the case, if those characters don't match, then we're going to return simply a plus b. I wonder if I have any zero length strings here. And there it is, the zero length string and our old friend string uh, index out of bounds. So we do have those, so we do need to check for those. So should be easy enough. All we have to do is check to see if these are actually we don't even have to check. yeah we do have to check because this is going to be looking for those characters to match so so what we need to do is put an and in here and a length is greater than zero might not hurt to put an extra parentheses there just to make sure we're not confusing anything It's not going to work here. Hold on a second. If we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to confuse things a little bit. Okay, so this statement resolves as being either true or false. Oops. Okay, so the character at the end of A and the character at the beginning of B are either equal or they're not. They're the same character or they're not. I think I've muddled our character at length minus one. Equals B character at index zero. Okay, so this entire statement is going to resolve as true or false. Okay, and we need both of these strings to be length at least one, or we come up with the index out of bounds. So what we're going to do is take this entire statement and we're going to use an AND here. We're going to put this at the beginning, okay? And there's a reason for that. I'm going to go ahead and if A length is greater than zero and B length is greater than zero and and then our previous our previous statement that returns is either true or false. Okay, now this is the reason I did it this way. We've discussed this before. When we're doing an AND conditional, AND only returns true if all statements in it that is chained in the AND return is true. So no matter how many statements you have, 
if you're using AND to separate all those expressions, if any one of them is false, then the entire result is going to be false. And let me see. And I'll show you what happens. And I'm 90% sure this will happen, not 100%, but let's see. If I put that our long statement there, and I put that in the front instead. And there it is. Why did it do that? Because it reads from left to right. The compiler reads from left to right. If it encounters something that is false, and then it sees an AND comparator, it's going to finish. Uh, it's not going to even read to the right of that AND comparator because it knows that anything that's false and anything else, whether that else is true or false, if A and B, if A is false, then it doesn't matter what B is. The entire expression returns as false. So what we want to do is to avoid these possible the risk of an out-of-bounds exception in this statement we're going to check to make sure that the strings we're manipulating are not too short we're going to check that first and then we're going to check specific indices so we're going to go ahead and use control C to fix that back where it was so and of course so we can get that nice little check mark there on concat. Now uh, also uh, when you're doing ORs or comparator the exclusive OR it behaves in much a, a similar manner. If you encounter a true and then the compiler reads OR if you've already gotten a true then no matter what's to the right of that OR operator, if it's an inclusive OR, no matter what's to the right of the OR operator, it knows that the entire uh, expression is going to, the entire uh, comparison is going to come back as true. So uh, sometimes you want to put, uh, if something is true, uh, if it's a, pr it could be problematic if it is true, for your other element that you're comparing the other expression, uh, you want to put that other expression to the right of the OR. So, uh, and on to the next exercise here. Actually, it looks like we're uh, we're getting close to about the 40-minute mark. So, I waxed loquacious with the comparators earlier there. So, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up, and then uh, we might be able to finish these. Uh, with the next uh, video. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate you. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, any requests or questions, I'd be glad to see those. And we'll see you next time.